deer numbers in Scotland are roughly around about 400,000. That, that's the sort of latest, red deer this is. And then more or less the same number again of, of roe deer. So we, we're talking somewhere in the range of, of three quarters of a million um, native deer in, in Scotland. Um, and of course, we have no natural predators. Your wolves and lynx and bears are, are long gone. So the natural pressure on deer numbers have been, has been absent for, for many, many decades, centuries. Um, coupled with that, on the back of the Victorian social trend uh, for sport shooting, deer, salmon and grouse in particular, deer numbers were, or red deer in particular, were seen as an asset, as a landowner. The, the more game you had, the more shootable game you had on your estate, the higher the capital value of the land. So historically, that, that ethos is, is embedded. And so although most deer managers or land managers would recognize, well, all of them recognize the need for deer to be managed, what that management looks like in terms of numbers culled in a given year and how it's done and what time of year it's done it is a huge point of debate. And, and essentially, you have the tension, as you alluded to, between the sort of ecological perspective, which suggests deer are... are at such levels that the carrying capacity of the land has been exceeded and that you know natural vegetation succession is impossible in in the with, with the with the densities of deer in some areas as they are and then you've got the flip side the, the traditional view if you like where there's a there's a reluctance to reduce deer numbers certainly to the to the to the densities required for natural tree regeneration in numerical terms Again, I'm generalizing, but you, you probably need to get red deer down to something like five per square kilometer to allow the ability of vegetation and trees in particular to, to regenerate. In some areas of Scotland, that figure is 60 per square kilometer. In many areas, it hovers around 20 to 30. So although there is an ongoing program of deer management, deer culling, what that looks like in reality for, you know, varies from one perspective to the other. So that's where the tension lies. We are now at a point where we are, we are potentially going to make it a legislative obligation for deer managers to reduce deer densities in some areas. There are already policies in place. Um, and, and I would add to that that this has already been attempted five or six times in the last 60, 70 years. So uh, again, you know, in the melting pot, there's, a, there's an ecological consideration, there's a, there's a cultural and a social and an economic consideration, and then poured on the top of that, there's a political consideration. So it makes that melting pot pretty, pretty complex. Um, rewilders, or some rewilders anyway, have come along and said, look, the problem will be solved overnight if we bring wolves back. Now, First of all, that's not an easy process in itself. I mean, physically, it's very easy, but culturally, it's not. And, and wolves are not some sort of silver bullet. You know, they're not going to all of a sudden regulate deer numbers overnight. Even if wolves were present in the numbers that, you know, the Scottish people are likely to tolerate, and, and I'm guessing at something like 500, it's going to take a hell of a long time for wolves to chomp their way through three quarters of a million red deer. So yeah. yeah, there's no easy answer to any of this. And again, it's, it, it, it's a symbol of um, a new way of thinking merging into traditional perspectives. And, and there's, a, there's, a, you know, there's an interface between those two interest groups and there's a tension around that. And, and I would say that progress is being made towards a sustainable solution but it's slow and it's and it's difficult.